Hello everyone. The objective of this session is to learn to draw stratified squamous non-keratinized epithelium. So this is what the final diagram will look like. Starting from the basement membrane over which there is a basal layer of columnar cells. Then there is an intermediate layer of polygonal cells and towards the top there is a layers of squamous cells. So let's see how to draw this diagram. Welcome to the session. So let us start from the basement membrane. Unlike the other epithelia, here the basement membrane is drawn in a bumpy fashion with its ups and downs. Again up and down. So this is the basement membrane. Now let's draw the uppermost layer of the epithelium. So this is the framework within which we will be drawing the entire epithelium. The next step is to draw a faint reference line which is parallel to the basement membrane. The purpose of drawing this faint reference line is to help us to draw the columnar cells with a uniform height. Now the columnar cells can be drawn like this with the apical surface touching the upper reference line and the basal surface touching the basement membrane. When we reach the these curves, that is where it gets a little tricky, where the shape of our columnar cell can get distorted. But just keep drawing. making sure that the base touches the basement membrane and the apical surface touches the reference line. Here again, in these dips, make sure it touches the basement membrane. And here the reference line seems to be a little higher up where it's been adjusted. Now again the apical surface are touching the reference line and the basal surface touching the basement membrane. So when you look at it as a whole, it is almost uniform in height throughout. The next step is to draw the nucleus of the columnar cells. The nucleus is oval, elongated and towards the base of the columnar cell showing the hematoxylin stain. Once the nuclei are drawn, we have finished the basal layer of columnar cell. Now we are drawing the next layer, the intermediate layer of polygonal cells or polyhedral cells. They are drawn like this with a polyhedral or a polygonal shape. Again, when we reach the dips, that is where it gets tricky. The cells have to be drawn in such a way that they touch the apical surface of the columnar cell. So I am adjusting it a little bit so that the edges are touching the apical surface of the columnar cell. Now it's time to draw the nuclei. The nucleus of the polygonal cells are round and centrally placed using the pencil denoting the hematoxylin stain these nuclei are drawn so in this part of the diagram the left one third we have drawn the polygonal cells now the next layer the next layer of cells will be again more or less a polygonal or polyhedral in shape. 
they are drawn in such a way that the surface of the cells touch the lower layer of cells but in this layer the cells will be a little more flat compared to the previous layer here will be a good time to fill the gap of the dips and make it a parallel shaped layers as we go higher and higher up the next layer see the cells are much more flattened out the next layer compared to the previous layer the cells are assuming a much more flattened out appearance so if you look at the layers from top to from bottom to top you can see this transition in shape as you go higher and higher up and reach the upper layers it will become squamous or flat shape so the next layer now we are drawing almost the sixth layer see the shape of the cells they are much more flat now we are slowly coming to the layers where it is almost assuming a squamous shape the shape of the squamous cells now further up it will be much much more closer to the shape of the squamous cells almost flattened now filling a couple of gaps here now we have reached the topmost layer the superficial most layer and now i am drawing the squamous cells in their typical wavy pattern with that bulge for the nucleus to occupy so these are the topmost squamous cells it is this layer that give its name stratified squamous epithelium now we will be filling the nucleus of the polyhedral cells in the initial layers they are having a round shape located in the center but as we go higher and higher up just like the cells have changed their shape the nucleus will also change its shape the nucleus will become flattened out as we go higher and higher up and reach the superficial most squamous layer the nucleus will be having a flat appearance occupying the bulge of the squamous cells so this gradation in nucleus happens once you are confident about the shape of the cells and the shape of the nucleus you can fill the rest of the diagram and complete it like this so these are the columnar cells the polyhedral cells and the topmost squamous cells so this is how the entire change in shape of the cell and the nuclei will look like is the diagram over no it is not the final step is to color the cytoplasm of the cells so there is an eosin staining of the cytoplasm of the cells which can be shown like this by gently shading the entire diagram individual cells need not be picked and shaded you can just go on shading the entire diagram like this so the stratified squamous epithelium is seen as a pinkish color structure in the microscope that look can be achieved by gently shading across the diagram like this here is a final diagram stratified squamous non keratinized epithelium almost eight layer thick in this diagram it can be 8 to 10 layers thick there is a basement membrane over which there is a layer of columnar cells there is an intermediate layer of polygonal or polyhedral cells as we go higher and higher up the cells become flattened and at the superficial most layer it is a layer of squamous cells 
they are seen in sites like cornea, tonsil, esophagus. To see some of the common mistakes that happens when you draw the stratified squamous epithelium and to see how to draw the stratified squamous keratinized epithelium, please watch the second part of the video.